Brothers, what are we doing? We came here to free Ryloth from Separatist control, and we succeeded. But look around you. We're now being ordered to target the very people we swore to protect, and I will not be a part of it any longer. Who will stand with me? Space Wizards, Plastic Spacemen, and Rebel Princesses. This is Todd Hoffman, and you're listening to Big T and Little T, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to episode 64. Today we're going to be talking about episode 12 of Bad Batch, which is Rescue on Ryloth. So, uh, unfortunately, Little T can't join join me today, but uh, the show must go on, and we are going to dive right into it. So, Uh, Big week this week. We did a lot of fun stuff. Saw some Space Jam. Uh, I think it's Space Jam. I call it Space Jam, too. I think it's Space Jam Legacy. But uh, we had a great time watching Space Jam. It was super fun seeing uh, the the crew back together. Obviously, Michael's not there. But uh, LeBron, I thought, did a decent job. I mean, this is not, uh, you know, an Oscar-worthy movie. But it was fun. Uh, A lot of great background characters. uh, Even better than, I would say, like, ready player one or anything like that it was really cool seeing a lot of different uh cartoons from the the warner brother uh uh catalog and you know they had a couple movie cameos like the matrix and game of thrones and harry potter and all that kind of stuff so that was super cool that was super fun but uh yeah it was a great movie uh so watch that uh this weekend uh okay Got to talk about Shin Godzilla for a half a second. So Trent and I have been on this Godzilla kick for a little bit. And uh, he has been watching these videos about like how they compare to the different Godzillas. And he mentioned this uh, Shin Godzilla. And I was like, I-, I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. Uh, and then uh, my buddy Armand, uh, who does a podcast, Syndicate, uh, they just reviewed, he just reviewed uh, Shin Godzilla like last week. And so listen to that. I'm like, I have to watch this movie. So, uh, it's essentially, uh, a Japanese movie that came out in 2016 and, uh, it is the 31st installment of Godzilla, but man, this one is totally awesome. Uh, and what makes it a little bit different is like Godzilla kind of evolved. So I'm not going to give too much away if you want to go see it or uh, want to rent it or whatever or um it but yeah this movie i saw it twice over the weekend it is so good i would highly recommend it and it's so much better than king uh king kong versus godzilla uh it's a little bit slower and i think that's why i like it is because it talks about the like political uh and the you know just how the the government of japanese is working with you know like what when they see this creature like what is it and all this kind of stuff and so anyways it is it's and it's got this deep undertone that godzilla most godzillas do but this one really kind of sticks it to about like weapons of mass destruction and what you know what we should do about it um and Godzilla is just like a boss on this one and I just love how the creature is designed and the evolution of the creature um yeah it is definitely worth a watch so yeah uh so I watched that uh twice this weekend it was so good um and then uh Sunday 
was Money in the Bank, WWE. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the matches, but um, it was super fun seeing uh, wrestling in front of a live audience. And there's quite a few matches on the card. Uh, a little long in a tooth, but uh, the big storyline here was uh, Radar Superstar Edge against Roman Reigns for the Universal title. Um, and it was quite quite the match. Uh, you could definitely tell Edge is a seasoned veteran here, and there was a lot of great storytelling, a lot of slow, deliberate pacing of this match, and then it heats up, uh, it gets a little crazy, uh, we have a couple run-ins, we have, um, the Usos come in, but then the Mysterios, Ray and his son come and take them out, and then Seth Rollins shows up, comes out of the crowd, uh, kicks edge, um, and sets, sets that up. And then, um, he kind of leaves, uh, the ref Charles Robinson got hurt, which was legit. He got run into and his knee kind of buckled. And so they had to get another ref, uh, lots of stuff going on. It was really a great match. Uh, but the story of the night is how it ended is the fact that, um, basically, Edge gets Edge gets the uh, the loss here. Roman pins him, um, but then John Cena makes the debut uh, back. He's back in wrestling, and so it was just super cool. Huge pop when when he shows up, um, and yeah, he kind of makes his makes his presence known. Uh, they cut off the air. Um, there's a couple things like behind the scenes that you can watch like on WWE or whatever, but uh, he just thanks the crowd and stuff like that. But it just basically, you know, typical wrestling fashion just gets right up in front of Roman's face. And uh, he does, you know, you can't see me. Uh, it was cool. It was cool seeing John Cena back. Um, so yeah, he's going to be, he's going to be wrestling again. Uh, it's, uh, it's something uh, I'm sure Summer Sam looks to be stacked. Uh, and then even on Raw, uh, my man Goldberg shows up. And so Goldberg's going to be uh, going after Bobby Lashley. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's going to be a pretty cool card. I'm sure there's still some surprises left to be had at SummerSlam. But, yeah, John Cena being back is kind of cool. Uh, okay. Got to talk about Star Wars High Republic uh, the Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. It uh, came out. Uh, when did it come out? It came out in, I believe, the end of June. Um, and so, I've been hitting this book hard. Uh, it is. I've been doing the audio. Mark Thompson is killing it, and I just finished it today. Oh my gosh! Really love what Kevin Scott's done. Kind of a lot of world building. Uh, really setting the tone for um, for uh, the High Republic and the Nihil and the Jedi, and it's a really good second book, I guess, in the, uh, in this kind of series. And uh, I know they're doing multiple authors, so I'm really interested to see where this third book kind of picks up in this main story. There's quite a few uh, literature out there, comics young adult novels, but this is the, the adult novel, uh, if you will, and uh, kind of the main story. And so, yeah, it's High Republic, Rising Storm. You have to check that out. It is just fantastic. Uh, super cool. Um, if you're into, if you're not really sure about it, I, I would highly recommend the audio book versions. They're really well done. Um, and it, it sometimes is easier to absorb, um, just kind of just in the, you know, Star Wars universe, there's a lot going on, but when it's narrated and you understand they're separate characters and all that kind of stuff, I don't know. Sometimes for me, it's a little bit easier to picture and imagine and all that kind of fun stuff. And it really helps with just retain, you know, kind of understanding what's going on with the story, but yeah. Uh, but so that, yeah, that that's been our week. And so let's just dive right into it. We have uh, the rescue on Ryloth, and um, yeah, this is this is very interesting um, uh, sh uh, show because 
we have it's like directly after bad batch of where we left off last time where we kind of do um an arms deal on this moon they're trying to help out the rebels on on ryloth and uh turns out that Hera gets captured during this process and then cham and his wife try to rescue um uh Hera which they do but then uh with Crosshair there he essentially takes out or Orn Free Tai which is a senator and frames Cham and so Rampart uh Vice Admiral Rampart is doing his evil doings um and Hauser who is a clone that fought with Cham in the Clone Wars understands truly how evil the Empire is and so yeah it's just a very um just a very interesting kind of thing that happens there and so that's the setup for ryloth uh rescue on ryloth for this so it's files right after so now we have we're we're following uh hera and um so this is what happens here is that hera starts off and it's kind of like uh she's just doing uh, some scouting and um yeah, it's uh, interesting uh, to see that she understands right away that the, where her parents are at is very fortified and she needs a little help. And so uh, her and Chopper uh, do a little recon, but then um, it is ready to, uh, she like needs a little, little help. So she reaches out to Omega and the crew is already leaving the system, but uh, they get this message and Hunter's like, you get rid of the, you know, the secure comm channel here. Um, but uh, he, uh, he, uh, he basically is kind of lays off a little bit on Omega and she's like, Hey, she needs our help. Uh, they're not totally convinced, uh, but they go back anyways and see what the issue is. Hera explains, Hey, my, my, um, my family's captured, need a little help. And Hunter and the crew are like, yeah, I don't know about this. But uh, if we're going to do a little Fast and Furious 9 or whatever, you know, as uh, as um, we, Vin Diesel would say, it would be like with family. So there's a family element there. Um, Omega would uh, essentially Omega convinces Hunter and says, hey, you know, uh, just like Don would say, it's like we're family. We, we would do this for our family and we need to make this happen for Hera and try to figure this out uh they do another recon just like uh hera did on the same kind of cliff looking into the um where they're captured and probe droid so we have the imperial probe droid we you know if you're not familiar that is the droid that han and chewie blow up in empire strikes back uh and made a cameo in rogue one but the probe droid is uh uh, and I guess the Viper pro probe droids are in Solo, but the probe droid is used for, uh, you know, just that, uh, of surveillance and they spotted them. So now the Bad Patch is kind of known that they're there. And so we have all that kind of stuff happening uh, with the Bad Batch. So they have to come up with a different approach since they know that the Empire knows that they're there. So they kind of do a two two uh, front approach, and um, you know it's like trying to figure out what uh, is going to happen with um, with the Bad Batch as far as like okay, how are we going to uh, make this two tong two prong approach with only the limited resources they have? Um, they uh, know that they could do this but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. And so that's kind of what they, they kind of scheme at. And um, it's, it's interesting to see what uh, we can do uh, with this. So uh, they have to figure out what this rescue plan is gonna be. Uh, Chopper uh, is sent behind the lines to kind of help take out the turrets because they wanna bring in a shuttle to help kind of this escape. Um, yeah, and it's 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 kind of cool what they do, but I love Chopper being this kind of secret agent uh, uh, man. And so Chopper gets involved, 
and they understand like there's this kind of crew change shift change uh with the with them and so he kind of comes on in um and that's where Hera and Omega are with Chopper and then the big boys are trying to get into um the Citadel to rescue um uh Cham and the wife and all that uh but they're at the where Omega and uh Hera are at are essentially uh a weapons kind of refinery thing and so they're gonna just have a little fun and try to make some havoc there you know um i yeah it's it's interesting to see where where we can where this goes but i love that chopper uh basically takes out a droid gets figures out what's going on and then the troopers find out and chopper shocks them and gets in there um it's it's really interesting to see how uh this plays out really love uh the interaction between omega and Hera and chopper um again like i said chopper is like my favorite droid uh but yeah we have that set up and then um so this blows up it kind of caused all this distraction and so now the reinforcements from the main base are going over to the refinery and this is where uh crosshair is put puts the old thinking thinking cap on and says hey this is a distraction and you know it, it's going to be interesting that it, cha- well a- actually um crosshair is like hey i am not going to move with the sheep and i'm going to stay back my crew is going to stay back we got to figure this out we know that they're trying to rescue uh, Sindula, you know, Champ Sindula and stuff. So they kind of set up a, they, they narrow it down. Like the only way they get out is this one way. And so we're just going to, they got a bunch of clone troopers. They got these cool shields um, and they're really like riot shields. And they're just going to set up camp and do that. And so, um, so he, they're basically cornered. Hauser, this is where Hauser comes in. Hauser also has a skinny and understands like something else is going on. He goes down to the cell. He meets the Bad Batch and uh, says, hey, we're friends and we can do this. Um, but I'm going to go a different route. And essentially they give him, uh, he's going to go out the main gate or the back gate where uh, all the troopers are at. And then um, the Bad Batch with Sandula's and a couple other people are going to escape from this kind of private, uh, like kind of shuttle. Um, it, it's it's going to be very interesting to see. Um, the The next little part for me is what is really really cool uh, is Hauser has this moment of clarity and says, "You know what? I am not going to do this." He has this great speech and essentially tries to rally his other clones and say, "Hey." We're here to free Ryloff, and now we're here keeping, you know, putting them, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're taking away that freedom. And so he has this interesting speech, and I really wish the sequel trilogy would have expanded on this, especially with Finn. I, I know that's not an, a new idea, but I just wish that they had an opportunity to expand that and have like a little stormtrooper revolution. Um, and essentially that's, that's the pitch with Hauser. Like, Hey, I am, um, I am going to do this and I'm going to stand my ground. I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. And who's going to join me. And surprisingly a couple of clone troopers do. So this begs the question, are they, you know, is the inhibitor chip, just a one-time deal as far as like okay when we have these magical orders that is when it kicks in or is it a little bit of both brainwashing and just this inhibitor chip i i think it's inhibitor chip does its thing when those commands come out but it is the will of the person to kind of fight that and say you know what i don't believe in this anymore i I, that's where i find really really interesting um and i I, again i just wish they explored that more um a little bit more in um 
in the in the sequel trilogy. I don't know. That's my thoughts. I I just I just love Hauser. I love that he's putting he he comes to it on his own, which is also very important. It's not forced upon him. He's just like mm, I don't like this rampart. I don't like these orders. Um, yeah, it's um, it it is uh very interesting that he makes that stand there and he also provides a distraction um yeah it's just uh very 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 uh cool about that um so hauser gets arrested with the uh, with the with the rest of the clone troopers that de did de defect and i think this is where um with only four episodes less or well yeah four episodes left I'm wondering if we're going to see if they're going to test the clones or we're going to see another expunge of the clones. Because again, when we reach Rebels territory, we're only down to like three clones with, you know, Rex and two others. Um, and so I don't know what's going to happen here if Rampart and Tarkin are going to say, hey, yeah, these other clones that are still around, maybe we should just get rid of them because. Um, it's it's going to be very very interesting how that's going to play out or maybe they're not going to do that until season two i i kind of feel like we're going to get a season two i don't know it's i i haven't really looked too deep into it if they're gonna do just one season or another season but um that's a very interesting thing to see if the clones are going to be expunged and if we're going to see that or they're just going to, I don't know. I, I feel like we're going to see a little bit more of that in the um, with the Empire and just how, again, how do we get the recruits? Uh, well, how do the clones stay? Or are they just going to run off their life cycle and say, okay, well, we're going to put all these guys in the front line and take care of that, um, and we'll go from there. So uh, the distraction is successful. They get everybody out. Um, they Sadulas want to pay Rex and the crew, and he's like, "You're gonna need this more than we are." Um, and then Hera and Omega have this very kind of nice, touching moment at the end. Just thank you for actually paying paying attention to me and coming to help me. Uh, that means a lot, and I think that again, that just shows the tenderness of Omega and what she is, and. It also shows like um, Hera in, in that. So yeah, that it's um, there's this really interesting part right at the end, and I don't know going back to kind of the Hibberter chip, what's right, what's wrong, that kind of thing. So Crosshair uh, asked Rampart if he can go personally hunt him, and then there's this one shot at a, as it ends the episode, and it kind of hangs on Crosshair. So the question is, is he mad that he, or he's on this kind of vengeance kick to, to, or if, um, we, um, how can I put it? Or is he really struggling with the idea? Like, again, similar to Hauser came to his own conclusions as far as what is happening with, um, with the empire is Crosshair also having those same doubts? I don't know. I I kind of felt like he was struggling a little bit, like trying to figure out, like, well, these are my friends, or is it something that I need to just do because they're not they're rogue and they're not following orders? So I don't know. Be interesting to see. Again, really enjoying this episode. Um, I really wish we got. I just love this conflict between what the Republic was standing for and now what the Empire is doing. Um, I love that kind of underlining tone. Um, and we're getting to see that explored a little bit more, which is super, super cool. So, yeah, really, really um, appreciate that. So, um, hopefully a little bit more. We only got a couple more episodes left. But, yes, we can, we can definitely... Uh, see that play out i don't i don't know where it's gonna go i don't know if we're gonna get another cameo um i know we're getting sometimes a little cute with like oh here's this person um 
I don't know if we're going to get the, you know, any more cameo cameos going into the last couple um, episodes, but uh, you definitely see the, uh, you know, what Hera, that, that foundation right there about helping other people out is definitely what drives Hera into what a leader she becomes in Rebels. So I like, I love kind of that, that world building, that character building there. Um, but yeah, there's still quite a bit left to go. Um, and again, I don't know, we, we still have to kind of, I feel like we still got to touch with the Caminos again and figure out what's going on with them. Um, and yeah, there's still a lot to explore and I'm really digging these kind of small, smaller episodes building to a bigger story. So we do have a question in chat. Here we go. Um, and this is coming from dark sage nine, nine one one seven. Thanks for, it says, I admit I'm a W fan who looks to see the exact opposite of fans want. I honestly would like to see Roman Reigns break Brock Lesnar's record of 504 days as universal champion. So personally, I want Reigns to keep winning and keep his reign going. My question is if Cena's wins, which is what I expect, is that the indication that Lesnar's 504 days reign will never be broken? Is Roman going to be uh, that long as champion? Something the fan want to see. I personally want him to get over 509, 500 days and lose the title. Um, so good question. Um, this is similar to kind of like, also, I would say like CM Punk's run too, where he had the title for over a year, which was amazing. Uh, you know, as a Mark, you know, that Roman Reigns is this kind of promise child in a sense, like the chosen one, just like Anakin Skywalker here. Um, and people don't like it. And, I really personally like the kind of bad, uh, bad guy heel Roman Reigns. Um, I think it goes over better with his character because they're booing him anyways. So he might as well make him a heel and he doesn't care. Um, I, I find it interesting that they tied him with Paul Heyman, uh, similar to Brock. So it makes for a good, I, I think it also makes, uh, it, it makes for a good, character growth for him with Heyman at, at his side. He's slimy. It, it, it works great. I love that. He's also kind of bringing in his family head of the table uh, that he brings them in and kind of does his dirty work as well. So I don't know. Um, it's interesting. I don't know if even like if Brock would come back, I don't know if they would even pull that off. Um, I was really surprised with Cena um, I knew that was coming. I was thinking it was more going to be more at money or at uh, SummerSlam, but it makes more sense to bring him back here, build that up. So you have a good SummerSlam uh, event. I don't know. I just don't know if they're going to flip the title to Cena like right, uh, right away. They've done that in the past. They, they, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, Cena was it was definitely over with the crowd. Uh, he even said in his like kind of after after it went dark, but he basically said, "Hey, it's great that you guys don't tell me that I suck." I you know uh, they're actually cheering for him. Um, it's good to have him back. I was hoping, I was really hoping Cena actually would be heel um, and come back like his old school uh, rapper type kind of Marky Mark uh, kind of thing, but. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're really, really close to that that 500 day mark, and if they want want to kind of cement Reigns, uh, I think they'll do it. I, Vince Vince really likes Roman, so I. I um, but Cena sells the merch and is the crowd favorite, so could go either way with that i mean uh, it is essentially all about the merch as well i think that's where like even like uh nikki james character with the superhero thing that's going to stick for a while because she's again it's good good looks gonna anything that looks good on a t-shirt uh and looks good on on television i think that's where kind of vince's head head is at i mean uh but yeah that's a great question dark sage i don't know i think um I think we're going to see Roman break, beat Lesnar. I really do. I think that's he's going to break that mark. And then uh, maybe after SummerSlam, 
uh, you know, Cena, Cena gets in there. Um, I still think Edge, uh, obviously you're going to do Edge and uh, Seth Rollins here, but I, I would love to see, because Edge is definitely turning to more of a heel, and I think it would be kind of cool actually to see a Cena-Edge thing um, happening as well. I don't know if they're going to go there, but uh, it, it, it's definitely looking like Cena wants a piece at Roman. That will definitely happen for SummerSlam. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. It'd, it'd be interesting. Great question. Love wrestling. Love talking wrestling. So appreciate the question out uh, there. Um, so, yeah, there you have it. Another episode of Big T, Little T. Again, you can find us on the socials. And uh, here, let me read them to you because sometimes I forget what they are. Okay, it's Big T, Little T Podcast on Instagram, B-L-I-L-T Podcast on Twitter. And then we're on Twitch. Yes, we stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Big T, Little T. Uh, you can find us there. Please subscribe. Uh, we want to, uh, you know, definitely uh, subscribe and we want to try to build that subscriber base here on Twitch as well as YouTube. So, if you could subscribe to YouTube, we were just trying to get to 50, 50 subscribers and it would be great to get 50 subscriber subscribers on uh, Twitch as well. But uh, yeah, we appreciate all your support. Hey, if you want to, if you want a sticker, we got them. All you need to do is tweet, rate us, uh, well, rate us on tab, Apple podcasts, tweet us out the review and we will not only read it on an upcoming episode, but then we could throw, swag in your face we would love to send you a sticker and a little something more there um also you can email us big t little t podcast at gmail.com they uh there you can ask us a star wars question a wrestling question a godzilla question any kind of pop culture question we'll take them uh and we'd love to read your question on the next couple episode and if we do we can also we would love to send you something in the the old snail mail. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Uh, next week, episode 13, we're going to watch Bad Batch. I've been staying away from the titles. I know I said that before, but I keep on staying away. I just want to be surprised. I, I do like how the titles a lot of times have double meanings. Um, and yeah, this one doesn't disappoint. Not only they physically rescue, but I think they also kind of rescue uh Hera and Hope and believing in, in uh the people which I think is cool and also Hauser kind of rescues himself. So yeah, it's a lot of deep meaning. Star Wars has got to be deep and nerdy and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh but yeah, it is uh I, I really like how they do the double meanings in, in these titles lately. So uh there you go. We always end the episode with truly wonderful the mind of the child is and may the force be with you always. Bye. See you later. Bye, 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 bye.
It is time for us to go. Well, co-pilot, we didn't do too bad. Do you have to go? For now. But I'm sure I'll see you around. And keep an eye on your brothers. They need it. I will. Thanks for believing in me. Thank you.